Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick All O'Clock with an interesting package from eBay. Ooh. <coughs> yes, so I was going to do a different package for my haul today, but uh, then this arrived in this morning's post, and, and it's actually something that I've been uh, anticipating because it is from eBay, and it is all of the Series 21 brand new minifigures. So there should be 12 in here. Let's have a quick look. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, good. <laughs> I thought we didn't have enough then. Minor panic. Right, so I suggest I probably build all these uh, and then we can take a look at all of them because I'm interested in your suggestions of where they should go in Brick Nottingham uh, because that worked really well last time when we got all of these series minifigures uh, and I don't want to just sort of have them all lined up on a shelf or in a dusty cabinet somewhere. I want to have them all in my city uh, up to no good or whatever uh, in interesting scenes. So uh, stay tuned for my ideas and maybe you can add to them. Right, I've decided to build these four at a time and then go through them in groups just because uh, there'll be too many and I'm finding it far too exciting. I want to sort of talk about them as I'm opening them. Uh, and the reason why this time I've bought the entire series in one go was really just to save a bit of money because I think I will end up buying most of this series. Uh, usually I just cherry pick the ones I want, especially when uh, the series hasn't got too many that I need. Uh, but this time there are quite a lot, as I say. Uh, and also, I have found myself going back to past series and trying to fill in the gaps of the ones I thought I wouldn't need at the time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then they obviously are a lot more difficult to get and a lot more expensive. So I figured now I would just go ahead and buy the whole lot and save myself a lot of aggro later on. So, first of all then, the Space Police guy, who is rather wonderful... Uh, I've kept off his backpack for a moment just so we can look at the uh, torso print with that wonderful gold zip diagonally and the classic space symbol. Uh, and that's very sort of reminiscent of those, uh, not the original classic spacemen, but kind of the addition after that. Uh, but they didn't have any printing on the back, of course, and that says police. This riot shield I could almost use for my super secret police. It looks rather fantastic, but I'd need more than one, I think. Black handcuffs. The facial expression is pretty mean and pretty boring on the other side. They're all double-sided faces so far, but, um, you know, I don't think that that's necessarily a great thing if you're just going to put on a very normal face like that because you can't then use it with any sort of caps or anything like that because, uh, you know, the second face would be showing. But, yeah, I like that. He's not my favourite, and I think the red visor makes him kind of a bit hard to see. Uh, let's put on this body armour now, which I've got his sort of siren wand type thing attached to uh, and his gun uh, and that is similar body armor to a lot of the other sort of space police or enforcer type characters we've had in the past and I suppose that's why I don't really love this one uh, because if you think about it we've had the series 7 galaxy patrol uh, minifigure we've had the series 13 galaxy trooper figure which are all very similar to this uh, this one has got the classic Space 5 though, so uh, I'm not too upset with it. Uh, and I suppose it could be somebody who's uh, apprehending all of my aliens that I'm going to have all around Brick Nottium because of all, all the uh, Space Police sets I've been buying. Next is the Pug Costume Guy. So Pugs are little dogs that look like that, and he is absolutely adorable. I love Pugs. Pugs are a bit like Bulldogs, which are my favourite dog. Uh, and this guy's got a wonderful sort of panting face on one side and he's got kind of a tongue stuck out on the other side which is a bit similar to uh, one we've had before but look at that cute little tail uh, and then he's got a bone in uh, this sort of uh, teal color and you get a spare one as well so they're obviously dog chew toys uh, and I think this can definitely go in my city quite easily uh, that one's less obvious but this one could be outside a pet store or he could be a dog walker or maybe there's a dog show on and he's just one of the uh, organisers. Or maybe even a dog groomer or something like that. So do let me have your ideas for him. But he could well be my favourite, especially his little paws. Uh, and the legs are actually midi-sized legs, so they've still got the hinge, but they are a bit shorter than a regular minifigure. 
So that's really good. Really like him. Then we've got the uh, violin kid. Uh, and this is not the most amazing one, but I mean, it's really nice. I mean, the violin's great. Really good print and shape to that. Uh, the bow is just a magic wand piece, of course. Nice torso with a t-shirt with the uh, old uh, Blacktron type logo on. Uh, we've had t-shirts with Blacktron logos on before a couple of times, including uh, 70813 Rescue Reinforcements, of course. Um, so this kid could be a busker or something like that, just playing in public for some uh, pocket money. Or maybe, well, I'll tell you what, what would be good is if we got three of these, um, pretended one was a cello, even uh, a viola rather, even though they're a bit bigger, uh, but we would need a cello. So uh, Lego, you need to make a cello next in the next series, and then we could have a string quartet playing in a fancy restaurant. So that's nice. I think that shouldn't be too hard to place, but give me your ideas again. Uh, and then one that's going to be practically impossible to use in a serious way in Brick Nottingham, uh, and that is the Centaur, which I do quite like. Uh, I was considering actually buying one of the Harry Potter Centaurs from the 75967 set, Forbidden Forest, Umbridge's Encounter. Um, I don't know why I was thinking of buying that either. And this one makes more sense in that it's got yellow skin, which I like for my city, and a kind of woodland theme on that torso, which I like quite a lot. Uh, I tried to put the bow, uh, the quiver rather, on the back and the hair was in the way until I realised it was supposed to go on the horse legs. And you could almost use those as half of a pantomime horse, of course, but then I don't know what you'd do for the front half. So yeah, definitely need ideas for this one because although it's a very beautiful minifigure, I have no idea how I can use that sensibly uh, in Brick Nottingham. So round one, I think my favourite is definitely the pug costume guy. Uh, and I need ideas, really, for these two, mainly. But, yeah, a really good start. All right, so the next four, starting with the Shipwreck Survivor, who was the most anticipated by me, just because of this wonderful little fella here. <laughs> he's adorable. Uh, so this is the Shipwreck Survivor, uh, and he's rather self-explanatory, I suppose. He's got some wonderful tatty uh, shorts on. He's got a nice uh, shell necklace and his back print has the necklace going around the back of the neck. So that's really nice. He's actually got a really good head that I hadn't realised with a sort of goatee beard uh, and some stubble. And he's also got his anchor tattoo on his arm. So clearly he was a sailor and that's why he was shipwrecked. He's got his message in a bottle, which I think is a really nice touch. And I really like that. I could just have that floating in the sea or maybe in the underwater scene. When I eventually do that, just have a bottle floating in the ocean. And the question is whether I actually put this wonderful hermit crab uh, on my beach in Brick Nottingham. I think I'll have to, won't I? He's too small. He'll get lost in my undersea setting. And that's made with a uh, round stud with a hole in it. You get a spare and the sort of poo piece, but with a um, in white, of course. So that's really nice as well. And I suppose I could use that as ice cream, but I was thinking of it as uh, being a poop now. So it's a bit <laughs> unappetizing. But yeah, he is absolutely fabulous. I love that. If there's any of these that I buy more than once, it might well be this guy, just so I can get a second bottle and a second wonderful crab. Uh, and these beard pieces and that head could definitely be used elsewhere, no problem. And the shorts. I mean, really easy to reuse all of those pieces. And now I had already made a hermit crab using a sort of shell piece and a few uh, odd pieces from my collection uh, for use on my beach. But it is a bit big compared with a minifigure. So maybe that is the one that I'll put in my undersea setting. Uh, and this one can go on Brick Nottingham Beach instead. So that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the uh, paddle surfer which is absolutely great, actually. Uh, I didn't like paddle surfing when I did it, personally, because um, I didn't have a great fun time, actually. It was quite windy when I did it, and I acted as a massive sail, effectively, on top of this board. And however hard I paddled, I made practically no progress uh, when I was trying to go against the wind. So <laughs> it's surprisingly tiring. Uh, but there is a wonderful surfboard for my surfboard collection. So that's one of the things I collect. My name is Robin, and I'm a brick addict. It's been zero days since my last build. Um, 
but the printed hat is really nice with kind of, I don't know if that's waves or what on it. Uh, there's a jumping uh, dolphin there with a pretty garish sunset setting scene on the t-shirt there and a really nice sort of jazzy sport logo on the back. And I do love these uh, hat and hair combos. They're really good and we get a really sort of happy face on the other side. It's a bit of a shame that some of these wonderful face expressions are hidden. Uh, and I haven't put on the blue life vest just because I didn't want to conceal all of those bits, but that's really nice as well. Uh, and then, of course, we get the dolphin itself, which is absolutely brilliant. We've had it before, but never in this color. This is sand blue. Usually they're in medium blue. And I think this is a much more realistic color, at least from uh, my thinking. I kind of think of a dolphin being a sort of gray blue. So really like that. So yeah, a bit, bit garish on the old color scheme, but very easy to place in Brick Nottingham for both of these, really. It's the beach, isn't it? I don't know where else we could really put either of them. So that's very good, but I'm going to need some suggestions from you for this guy. Yep, it's yet another space alien. Uh, this one's just called Alien, but we've had loads of aliens as series minifigures before. We've had uh, the Alien Trooper, the Space Alien, uh, all sorts. But this guy's got quite an interesting head with some sort of lumpy bits on the back. We've got the sort of mottling colour there and ridges down the centre of the forehead. Uh, and he's got this kind of breathing apparatus, which makes a lot of sense because maybe he's from a planet with a very different atmospheric composition. But he very much reminded me of the character Zuckus from Star Wars, who I happen to have here. He looks a bit similar. I mean, totally different colours and everything, but he's sort of got the uh, breathing bit on the front and a sort of lumpy <laughs> head. Yeah, so this is uh, Zuckus. It was only in the uh, Slave 1 set, 75243, to my knowledge. So I put him to one side. Um, but yeah, we've got a crowbar in Pearl Dark Grey, uh, which is uh, new, I think, and just one of those crystals. But yeah, I like him. But again, I've just now got one more alien <laughs> to add to all my space police aliens uh, with which to find some sort of scene to use them on. Uh, and maybe it'll involve this guy, this police space policeman, I don't know. Then this one's really good fun. So this is the airplane girl. And um, obviously that airplane piece is new, but we've also got the torso with uh, some initials on and kind of some a wings sort of pin badge. And on the back, which you can't really see, let me just uh, pull this apart. You'll see there's a great big uh, propeller print as well. So there's the front print. So yeah, I think that's a really nice one. And quite interestingly, you actually get uh, hair for the minifigure with mini legs. Uh, as well as a flying hat with goggles that are in dark tan. And I don't think we've had them in dark tan before. And you get a spare set as well, so that's really good. Uh, and the plane's really nice. It very much uh, reminds me of the Series 18 race car guy who's got a massive race car around his midriff. Um, and I think this could be used in a very similar way. The, the way I was planning on using the race car was to have one of those kids' rides outside a, a shop or a store uh, and have a child riding on it. Uh, and I could do the same with this. But this is a lot more versatile, actually, because, look, we've got a stud in the middle, which we could put a great big machine gun on. <laughs> we've got a stud on each wing, which we could put some sort of missiles on. We could really fully load this thing and have it flying through the sky. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, but maybe this is uh, a toy that's been bought at the toy shop, or maybe it's a kid who just loves aeroplanes and is at the airport. I don't know. So give me your suggestions for her as well. Really like that one. Uh, but out of this second group of four, I think my favourite is definitely the Shipwreck Survivor. So we'll put him through to the three-way final. Uh, but I'm really happy with all of them. I think they're just getting so good at doing these series now. Great. On to the next four. So on to the final four. And this is a wonderful contender for best one. The beekeeper. He's in a wonderful big white suit, much like those uh, scientists I've got on my uh, toxic waste train wagon. Uh, and I really like his face. He's got one <laughs> expression where he's kind of got his tongue out because he's clearly concentrating or thinking. And I do that, so <laughs> I recognize that face <laughs> a lot. Uh, and the other one's just pretty much the same, but without the tongue. But that's just brilliant. I mean, I might have to swap that head out so we can see it a bit better somewhere else. Because with this 
very dark uh, beekeeping hat on. We can't really see it to its full glory. And we've got a nice honeycomb sort of logo on the shirt and a bit of spilt honey. And he's holding uh, with bees uh, one of the uh, trays of honeycomb full of delicious honey and the wonderfully creative build of the smoker. Uh, you just use smoke not to harm the bees at all, but just to pacify them a little bit. They just get a little bit calmer when they've uh, been exposed to smoke. So he just looks iconic to me. You know, you know exactly what he is and what he's doing. So I'm probably going to have to build him a brick-built beehive because I don't think we can use the hive piece that comes with um, quite a few sets, actually, including 60171 Mountain Fugitives because that's the sort of natural hives that a bee might make in the wild, sort of hanging from a tree or something. But when they're in captivity, they're kind of in boxes with loads of trays for the honeycomb, of course. So I might have to make them, I don't know, what do you think? As part of the farm that we're doing at the moment, Far Corner Farm? Or should I have it just um, on top of the roof, flat roof of a building? Because um, that's what happens usually in the UK. You just have some uh, flat roof, even in a city, that just has a few hives on it. And uh, bees use it as their base to go and hunt for pollen and nectar. So there we go. So that's really nice. Uh, then we come on to the Ancient Warrior who is quite dramatic, I must say. I mean, look at that headpiece and all of this body art. Um, now, really, they should be calling this uh, an Aztec warrior, in my mind, because it's clearly a, a jaguar warrior. He's even got pointed teeth on one side of his face. The other one's pretty similar, but just with a nice smile. And he's got the jaguar uh, uh, shield as well, with the tongue sticking out there. And he's even got the uh, maca whittle sword which has actually got the black bits of obsidian stone kind of uh, wedged into it and they'd be very sharp indeed uh, before you could really do metal work those were the sharpest thing you could get it's what they use as dragon glass in lord of the rings uh, lord of the rings what am i talking about in uh, game of thrones of course so that's the same stuff but yeah he looks rather fantastic but i have absolutely no idea how i can use him in brick nottingham I suppose he could go uh, on the tour bus to represent Mexico, <laughs> but um, I don't know. He's 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 not very well dressed for tourism, is he? Taking pictures, and he'd definitely have to lose his weapons. Uh, I'm going to do a museum, but it's not going to be a natural history museum. It was going to be um, a an art museum, really. So again, I can't really use him there. So, yeah, answers on a postcard or maybe in the comments section below for that one. Now, this is one that I've really been looking forward to getting as well. It's the cabaret singer. I kind of think of it as maybe somebody in drag. Uh, and maybe they're singing It's Raining Men or something like that. Hallelujah. But that singing face is absolutely amazing. There is another one uh, where she's just happy. Uh, but this feather headdress is spectacular. Now, I think that pose with the microphone and holding the mic stand at an angle and with this rather glittery um, sort of, well, I suppose it's part of the outfit really, isn't it? And a bare back um, could go in lots of places, but I think the best place might be the Pink Flamingo nightclub, of course, where she could be a performer. Uh, but it'd be a shame to lock her up inside that building and not be able to see her very much. So maybe she needs to be outside on her way in or maybe just performing somewhere else, maybe at a restaurant or something like that. So ideas on that one as well, because you always have great ideas to share with me. Uh, and then last but not least is the Ladybird Girl. Uh, maybe it is least, I don't know. It's not a favourite of mine. I mean, it's quite novel. It's quite interesting. You've got the sort of wing covers of the uh, bug itself and the bug helmet that we last saw in the series minifigures anyway, on the uh, Bumblebee Girl, which was part of series 10. I'm not sure about that face either. I think this one's definitely better. Um, and it's been on a couple of other minifigures in different forms as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, wh what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, I don't have the Bumblebee Girl for the same reason as, as, as I won't be able to use this very easily because what would they, uh, what would they do and where would they go? And I suppose the Bumblebee Girl now could actually be uh, budding up with the beekeeper, but um, this is even more problematic to use. Uh, it's only supposed to use one of these ladybug pieces, but you do get two, so I just thought I'd stick them both on there. 
Um, yeah, so I suppose it's a costume for a, a party or something like that, or maybe a costume shop or something like that. But uh, do tell me if you've got any more innovative ideas. Uh, and then in round three, I do really like the cabaret singer, but for me, the winner just has to be the beekeeper because he's great. And that face, wow, brilliant. So I really like that. Uh, a guy in the smoker and a towel. Yeah, this one definitely. He is the best of that round. But do tell me what you think is the best of each round. Uh, and then you can have your own final, which we'll have coming up. Now, altogether, I think this is a really good, high quality series of minifigures, actually. Uh, there's been a lot of sort of negative talk about the fact there's only 12 of them, which is a shame, I agree. But th the reason I think is because they're easy to collect when they cost uh, so much each. Uh, and that's another complaint that people have said is that the price has gone up yet again. But I think if you want these large pieces like the uh, plane and even a dolphin, which must make feeling them through <laughs> the bags a lot easier, um, and all of these printed pieces, printed torsos, printed arms and so on, then I think, you know, you can't have everything. So for me, I'm very happy with this collection of 12 wonderful editions, and I'm hoping to use them all in my city, as I say. Um, Honourable mentions must go to the cabaret singer and also to the airplane girl, who I think are really excellent quality minifigures. Uh, but they didn't make the final cut of our top three, uh, which were, just to remind you, the pug costume guy, who is hilarious with his panting face and his very accurate head. The uh, shipwreck survivor, who's got the most adorable little hermit crab with him, as well as looking rather cool himself with his message in a bottle uh, and then we've got the beekeeper who as I've just described is absolutely brilliant almost perfection actually so uh, yeah more of the same please Lego so drum roll in third place I'm going to say is the pug costume guy very good very wonderful but just beaten by better contenders and then in second place, it's the beekeeper. Yeah, I do love this guy. He's absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to putting him somewhere very visible in my city. And I might even get a second one to be his assistant or something like that. Or should I say bee assistant? Yeah, bad pun. Uh, so that means that in first place, don't really need a drum roll because it is the shipwreck survivor. And that's just because of this wonderful crab and because I suppose he is pretty cool on his own. Uh, and I could definitely get a second one of these to get another one of these bad boys, another one of these floating bottles for my underwater scene and uh, another beach bum. So yeah, he is my winner today. Yay! Now, as I said earlier, I do need your help with all of these. Uh, I really appreciated it last time we had a whole series of minifigures to place in the city and you came up with some really good ideas that I didn't come up with at all. So uh, how am I going to use each of these in my city? Try and keep your uh, <laughs> comments down to uh, a few paragraphs or, <laughs> or less. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really look forward to reading them. So, cool. So there are my winners for the Series 21 minifigure series. I'll uh, look out for all of your suggestions and do also tell me which one is your favourite because uh, maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe I've underestimated a few of them. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, well, it will be Farming Fridays Part 2, and we'll go back to Far Corner Farm uh, for a bit more development. So, see you then. See you!